this is the board um, and there is a LED which is just blinking to show that the code is running keep alive signal just to blink one second and this is the ADXL345 accelerometer board and as of now it's uh, it's programmed to uh, sense the acceler acceleration along three axes uh, X, Y and Z and as you can see if I am uh, so, so if I'm moving this if I'm moving this here and you can see the values are changing so if I uh, move it like for example let's say I, this is the Y axis if I'm changing you can see the values are changing so I'm just shaking it so just simulating a vibration low frequency vibration and here you can see the values are changing there are three or four different uh, maximum G setting uh, that is 2, 4, 8 and 16 G so when I leave it it becomes constant again so as of now it's working fine uh, it's just showing the the readings out of this three now the Z axis has some problem uh, it's definitely not the software problem but it's something to do with the hardware uh, as of now we'll just ignore it so only X and Y axis is what is running uh, before we run the FFT directly we should first uh, verify if uh, the analog signal that is the frequency is being captured properly or not so as of now I have kept I have programmed it for 8G range and it is capturing the because the board is not running it is just sensing the gravity the acceleration due to gravity on three different axes so what I will do now I will just shake it like this and as I am shaking you can see that the values are changing but let me just log the value so what I will do is so I will capture it and overwrite and it's capturing now so let's just shake it in uh, one of the axis and and let us again change the axis and again shake it again on three diff two different axis so this is the one of the axis so I think I have enough captured so let me just stop the capture and uh, this is the file where the values are captured now just a text uh, file uh, what I will do is uh, I will uh, just copy it in an excel sheet so just copied and pasted the values into an excel sheet and let me just separate into uh, columns each of these axes so uh, now uh, the, the, the acceleration values are captured on uh, each of the column so let me just take the uh, data into you know a separate sheet just to plot the data uh, so as you can see I have just captured the X and Y axis the Z axis has some problem so now uh, let us just plot the data of X and Y axis we should see some sine wave kind of pattern on two different axes and uh, this is the, uh, the um, sine wave pattern so as I told earlier that we are capturing on X axis let's say the blue one and later on we stopped the x axis and we started shaking along the y axis and so the the sine wave so there is more signal on x axis initially and then more signal on the y axis so let us do an fft on the excel sheet itself so uh, excel, the excel sheet has this fourier analysis uh, let's do for one of the axis let's say x axis and see how does the fft appears on excel sheet okay so i've captured and say okay and see this is the F50 which has been uh, calculated by excel sheet and it's in complex format so let us just instead of capturing the phase and the amplitude we'll just capture the amplitude because that is what is we are more interested this is only for one of the axis x axis so uh, now the FFT magnitude has been calculated and this is a 256 point FFT and this is the magnitude uh, we are not really bothered about the absolute value but just the relative value is good enough for us so let's plot the FFT now and see how does it appear and uh, this is the FFT of the signal uh, or the, the we were shaking that uh, accelerometer and this is the FFT that we got we'll only consider half of the point now this is 0 to 255 so 0 to 128 or 127 is only the valid information and beyond that is just the mirror image now this is the property of the FFT anyways for clarity let us just move it to a uh, move chart to a separate one and as you can see it is clearly plotting the FFT uh, this is no signal uh, here is like pretty low frequency one signal is there and then medium one frequency is there and third there is another signal over here 
So it basically uh, this experiment it proves that uh, we are at a stage where the data can be converted to FFT. Now uh, in our later trial uh, I will just uh, put it into the controller, uh, write the code on the microcontroller DSP and see the output. Kilometer and the FFT waveform by FFT application have been integrated. So what I will do is I will just shake the sensor again and let us check the FFT waveform in the microcontroller. When it is running actually on the microcontroller, no more Excel sheet. And so uh, this is the waveform that I got when um, you know uh, the I I I uh, oscillate the sensor at a very vibrate the sensor at a very low frequency. And as you can see, uh, the frequency is pretty low in this case. And this is the windowed waveform, and this is the FFT. So it's sharply detecting one of the peak. And the amplitude is pretty low because I cannot really shake it slow and high amplitude. I think that's not possible <laughs> by human. So let's do one thing: is that I will uh, now vibrate at a much higher frequency, and so effectively, the FF this sine wave should become uh, thinner. Uh, FFT should move this side and this amplitude should also go high. Let's check that. And this is the sensor value when I vibrate it faster. So I cannot really do it at much higher frequency but you can see it is slightly shifted and uh, amplitude has gone high. The sine wave also become thinner so it's higher frequency. So this is the... Uh, so it's working fine. Now this screen what you see is only possible in debug mode with this uh, microchip ID and this is a tool provided by microchip. So the other option is that we will just display the peak and the amplitude and what is the frequency on the UART and that may be something that uh, will be you know the final output the final product because anyway we are not giving a PC as a final product. So I will show you that as well. And, uh, yeah so this is the <coughs> the final uh, demo and uh, just to make a note of the color coding of the wire this is how it should be connected here and on this board and here the green one the green one is over here and um, the axis axis for vibration is like this uh, this say is the X axis so it has to go up down up down like this is one of the axis and if you reverse it then this is the other axis okay this sensor will work in this axis also on this axis which is the Y axis plus and the minus in this way uh, whereas in this vibration along this axis the sensor is not very sensitive because of I don't know some unknown reason so it will not work so only the previous two axis what I have shown is is what it has to be tested also we are doing a 200 hertz sampling and um, and 256 point FFT so the maximum frequency that you can see is about maybe 80 hertz 90 hertz which is half of about 200 hertz 100 hertz is ideally the theoretical half but still it should be limited to about 80 90 hertz and it has only has to be tested along the axis that I have shown now let's see the final demo how it will look like so only thing you need is this USB cable, uh, this USB cable it powers the board as well as gets the serial cam uh, the data also. So just plug it into the, um, into the PC and then open a, a terminal code like a real term or something and select the, uh, the board rate as 115200 and the proper COM port and you will get the maximum amplitude and the frequency. Right now the sensor is not vibrating so there is no frequency shown, both are zero, frequency is zero, amplitude. Let me start shaking first at a lower frequency and let's see what is the data here. So this I am shaking at a lower frequency. And this is at lower frequency and as you can see the, um, the values are increasing at the frequency is also increasing. Let me start checking it at a faster frequency. Uh, like this. And okay, let me just stop this. 
and as you can see it is showing the values here like 31 32 and 5 hertz these are some of the values that uh, you actually it's one when it shows 198 hertz is actually 1.98 hertz um, we will sort that out later on but as of now both the amplitude you can see it's increasing as well as the frequency also increasing so the customer can just mount it on a test bench with a known frequency and amplitude and see if he aligns the frequency, the sensor, does it change the value or not.